I was hoping I, I could film the building, but I don't know where it is. We're just gonna, um, we're just gonna go. Yeah, I was hoping to see the building, but I don't know where or where to position myself. I think it's right in over there somewhere, but I don't think we're gonna go there anymore. I really wanted to take a video of the main building, but I didn't want to navigate around the station anymore. I'm not even sure if we're allowed up here. Anyway, from the Prague's main station, we made our way back to the municipal house to this area. This is the Republic Square. It's located between the old town and the new town. We decided to come back and explore the old town some more, because I specifically planned a day to see the new town a few days from now. Anyway, in this square, or close to the square, you'll find popular and important buildings such as the municipal house, the powder tower, a shopping mall called Palladium, the Czech National Bank, and the Kotva department store, which we're heading right now. From the Republic Square, right around the corner is the Kotva department store. I don't know, it's on my app. It's probably one of the famous department stores here. Well, it's kind of famous because it's considered to be a Czech cultural monument due to its architecture, visual, and structural concept. It has multiple intertwined hexagonal floor plan, 10 interconnected escalators, and an underground garage and supermarket. The store mainly sells clothes and products related to fashion. Yeah, we're gonna move on then. This is so funny. I've, I saw this on the first day here. I had to cut out the original audio on this clip because they had music blasting on that thing. Anyway, this is called a beer bike. I guess it's popular here in Prague. You basically pedal your way around the city with a guide while drinking unlimited supply of Czech's famous beer called the Pilsner Urquell. This is called the St. James the Greater. It's a, it's a church, but the most significant part of this church is the organ or the, the what do you call that? The harpsichord or something? I don't know. It's the organ that they have here. That's the most magnificent thing. St. James the Greater was founded in the 13th century. The original building was destroyed by fire in 1689 and was replaced by this one sometime in the 18th century. Although it's mainly known as the final resting place of a Bohemian Chancellor in 1714, it was also titled as a minor basilica granted by Pope Paul VI in 1974. But what I really came here to see is the organ. I think it's closed. Let's see. Oh, wow. It's closed. But I can still kind of see it through the window. Um, it's too bad I can't see. I mean, I can see some, a little bit of the church, but I can't see the organ. It's probably up here. Um, we'll try and um, come back here again, maybe. It's pretty close to where, where our hotel is, so we'll try and make it here. We just have to make sure. Um, when it's gonna be open. So we're still outside the um, St. James. We decided to wait for it because they're gonna open in like 15 minutes. Hopefully, um, hopefully I can film in there. I'm inside the church now. And um, it smells kind of funky in here. It smells old. But it looks freaking amazing. Like I said, the church is really amazing. Aside from the Baroque style architecture, inside the church you'll find 20 altars, which I have no idea where they are. But what I found that's really amazing are the paintings on the ceiling. There's also a 400 year old severed arm around here somewhere that belonged to a thief. Legend says that when the thief tried to steal the offerings from the altar, the wooden statue of Mary grabbed his arm and only let go when the monks cut it off. I believe the arm is located near the tomb of the chancellor. Yeah, this, this thing is like very different and the um, frescoes on top it looks really nice that one actually looks like it's 3d but um, what I'm looking for is the organ that's what I'm looking for but um, let me just focus on this first this is like the main altar 
Look at this. That looks like it's made of gold. Well, it's most likely made of wood, but right below the painting in the middle is the wooden statue of the Virgin Mary, which I said to have some kind of miraculous powers. Just like the story of the thief, there's also a story about Vaclav Vavrinik Rainier, who was the artist that made this painting. Based on the story, while he was working on this painting, many people in the church, including his family and friends, all died because of the plague called the Black Death, which killed about 200 million people, making it one of the most devastating pandemics in human history. Anyway, on the day he finished the painting, he started showing signs of the plague and died the following day. Because of this, people believed that the statue of Mary was protecting him until he finished the painting. The main part of this whole church is that one. So this is the um, that's the organ. Now that I'm learning more about this mm -hmm. church, it's the organ you see it. here is really not the main attraction of this basilica. Although it's still quite significant because it's the largest organ in the whole country. It was installed here in 1702 and was built by the famous Czech organist named Abraham Starkov Loket. The organ was reconstructed many times throughout the centuries, and the last one was in 1982, where they restored Starka's original sounds. Today the organ has 14 manuals and 91 stops, which to be honest, I have no idea what that means. But with the 8,277 pipes in this organ, which makes it sound like a large symphonic orchestra, I have to say it's really amazing. Yeah. It looks, it looks amazing. So now we're going to leave the church. We're going to go to, uh, I think, three more other churches. We're going to skip lunch because um, we're going to go to the catacombs on the, what, the, what was that? The bell tower or something, or the astronomical clock tower. There's, there's like a, a crypt. What is that? The catacombs. We're going to go there at four, but so we're going to skip lunch and go to four, three more different churches. Just to make it clear what I said there, from here we're going to see a few more churches which might make us miss lunch because we need to go back to the old town hall where the astronomical clock is located and take a tour of the underground city beneath the old town square. So this is the St. Castellus Church. St. Castellus was a martyr that converted many people into Christianity during the Roman Empire and in doing so he was tortured and buried alive in 286 AD. Anyway, this church was built between 1375 to 1399, and throughout the centuries, it suffered damages from wars, floods, and fire. It was repaired and reconstructed many times, as it stands today as the only church dedicated to St. Castellus in the Czech Republic. So coming down from the street, from that St. Um, Cactolius or Cactus, whatever, um, I forgot the name, sorry. But coming down from that street all the way here is uh, the another Covenant or like another church, I should say, is the Covenant. What am I talking about? The Convent of St. Agnes, which is uh, located here. The Convent of St. Agnes was founded by Agnes of Bohemia, who was the daughter of King Ottokar I. They had dormitories for male and female inside the convent, as well as a church, a cloister, a mausoleum, and a few chapels. Today, it's considered to be a National Cultural Heritage Landmark and a gallery exhibiting bohemian art during the 19th and 20th century. Alright, one more or maybe two more churches. So from here, we made our way to this church. It's called the St. Simon and Jude Church, which dates back to 1354 where it began as a hospital. It was constructed into a church in 1615 to 1620 and despite the Baroque style decorations of its interior, the famous thing about this church is the pipe organ built in 1724 because it was played by Mozart and Joseph Haydn when they performed here. Anyway, during the fall of communism in 1989 to 1993 here in Czech Republic, it was never used as a church again. It was given to the Prague Symphony Orchestra to be used as a concert hall, which is what it's used for today. So um, this is the church of uh, St. Jude and St. Simon and St. Jude. Apparently, um, a lot of famous artists played here, like uh, Mozart actually played here and other famous ones that I'm probably gonna mention. I'm probably gonna mention, that's what I mean. But um, from here, we only have one more. Um, we are gonna go to one monument. Actually, this is better in my background. We're gonna have one monument. 
uh, maybe some synagogues and one more church. And after that, um, we're actually free to go back to the catacombs of the astronomical clock. But if we have time, we'll probably eat something before we go to the catacombs. So we're going to head to the monument with all the churches around it. This is the monument I was talking about. This is a Franz Kafka's monument and right behind it is the church, the Holy Spirit Church or something. I'm going to correct myself if I'm wrong. I actually said that right. It's the Church of the Holy Spirit which dates back to the 14th century. This church was built for a Benedictine convent that once stood here. Like most churches here, it was also damaged throughout the centuries. This one was damaged during the Hussite Wars in the 15th century and by fire in the 17th century. The church was eventually rebuilt as what you see here. I've read that since it's located here close to the Jewish quarter, many Jews attended Catholic services here during the reign of Emperor Ferdinand I in 1556 to 1564. Right next to the church is the Franz Kafka monument. Franz Kafka was a famous novelist and a short story writer in the early 20th century. His works are a mix of realism and fantasy, which kind of explains this statue. Around here is like synagogues. Um, oh, this one? I guess this one is a synagogue right here. It's actually called a Spanish synagogue built in 1868. Around here is uh, where we had uh, dinner last night. That's the restaurant we had dinner last night. And um, that's it. I guess we're gonna have something to eat, right? We're gonna eat something and then um, after that we're gonna go to the catacombs. Since we had time to spare before our tour begins, we found this restaurant close to the Old Town Square where we decided to have a late lunch. Surprisingly, the restaurant just opened so we were the only people here right now. I still don't know or understand what time restaurants usually open here because it was close to 3 in the afternoon already. Anyway, I'm just glad they opened in time because our tour starts at 4. So as I scanned the menu, I found this. As I ordered the roast pork knee, I got so excited about this dish, I totally forgot to film the rest of what we ordered. With the pork knee, I ordered beer which I think pairs perfectly with it. This beer by the way is called Pilsner Urquell. It's the most famous local beer here and it's the first pale lager in the world created in 1842. Since it's claimed to be the best beer in Europe, I have to admit I'm starting to like it. You know, something we learned while eating here in Prague is that bread and condiments on the table are all automatically charged to your bill after. But I'm not sure about these pretzels though. I think they only charge you if you eat it. So as a starter, we order this. It's a traditional garlic soup served with croutons and cheese. I have to tell you, the soup smelled so good the moment you opened the, the lid. We both love garlic so the smell was amazing. Really? Yeah. I wish I didn't need to replace some of the parts of the audio here and just let you listen to our conversation. But there's copyrighted music playing inside the restaurant. So I'll do my best to edit out the music while it's not playing in the background. You can really smell the garlic. Let me try it. Oh man. <clears throat> wow. That's, that's really good, especially on a cold day right now. It's really good. Get one more. This is her soup, by the way. Mm. Mm. The cheese makes it too. It's really good. It's the first time I've heard of a garlic soup, but they have potatoes, uh, the cheese, and the croutons. But it's really garlicky, and um, we really, we both really like garlic, so it doesn't bother us at all. I eat garlic whole before, raw. <laughs> I love it, and people start complaining that I smell like garlic, so I stopped eating. But whatever. She ended up ordering beer as well. Initially, she just wanted Sprite, but I think she got jealous that I'm having beer. So while we're waiting for the food, I decided to try the pretzel. <laughs> I tried to tear a piece of the pretzel, but it was just really hard. I don't know if it's really like that or it's just old, so I took a bite instead. I know you're thinking it's probably a display, but our waiter said it's not and we could eat it. Anyway, the pretzel was really hard, but as I kept chewing it, the flavor was actually not that bad. Okay, it's hard, but it slowly softens up while you eat it. So I gave it another chance and decided to dip it in the soup. It's funny at the moment because the sound it made as I bit into it was really loud, but I really like it, especially with the soup. I think it would have been also good dipping it in melted cheese. 
So after waiting a while, they finally served the roasted pork knee. The origin of this dish has always been disputed between the Czechs and the Germans, which in German it's called Schweinschacks. Here I think it's called Koleno, and it's definitely a traditional Czech cuisine. As with many traditional dishes, the roast pork knee was consumed by poor people back then because it's the cheapest and the toughest parts of the meat. And because of that, preparing this takes a really long time. It requires marinating it traditionally with beer for days or even weeks if the cuts are really big. Then it's roasted at low temperatures for about 2-3 to three hours long. See, I know about this dish before I came to this country. That's why I'm really excited to try it. I'm also familiar with it because the Philippines have something similar to this called crispy pata, which I really love. The only difference is crispy pata is deep fried. It's like dark meat. I was hoping the, the skin is crispy. And um, man, it smells like pig. <laughs> so I was like, you know what sauce would be good with this? Vinegar. Vinegar and garlic. Oh man, look at this. I don't know about that fat though, but... Oh man. Let me try this. Ow. Yeah, let me try this first. Mmm, oh my god. That is actually good. Mmm. Whatever the hell that sauce is. No, I'm gonna try this one. I think this is like radish or something. Yeah, it's mustard. That's mustard. Then this one is, um, I don't know, like that one. That one sucks. But um, this sauce right here is the best. Man. Mm. Really good. Really good. Man, it's totally different from um, crispy pata. Because it's roasted. Crispy pata is like fried. Let me try the skin. It has a lot of fat though. That's the problem. But I'm gonna remove the fat. Oh man. Sweet. I think they rub honey or sugar on the skin like honey roasted ham and it's not only sweet it's also crispy at the same time. Since I was so distracted with my pork knee at this moment I just realized she ordered this. Their menu says it's big Norwegian salmon with butter and herb sauce. I'm pretty sure it's not a traditional Czech dish because of its name but it sure looked really good. She asked me to try it and see what I think about it. You know, it doesn't matter if it's raw or cooked. I love salmon no matter what. But having the taste of this pork in my mouth, I have to be honest, I don't even remember what the salmon tasted like. I'm pretty sure the sauce helped out a lot with the flavor of the pork, but I think even without it, it's still good. I just think it's better with the sauce in my opinion. Oh, and of course, washing it down with beer is the best way to complete this meal. It's just too bad we were kind of pressed on time because our tour is about to start, and this dish took a long time when they served it. So I did my best to eat and enjoy this pork meat as much as I can. If only I knew it was this good, I would have ordered this some other time. Anyway, after this amazing meal, we rushed back to the Old Town Hall to start our tour. So we're kind of in a hurry right now. Um, I had to like finish, eat my pork really fast. I wasn't able to finish it, but I would have finished it because it was really good. But we're gonna go rush to the tower right there where the catacombs are. Um, hopefully we'll make it because it the tour starts at four and it's like 10 minutes before uh, 10 minutes to four 
So we just made it to the tour. We got our passes. And it's about to start right now. We're gonna do it all over again. What we've seen this morning. God, my zit is really big. Pork that I know, I would have eaten that whole pork, man, it was so good. Uh, we had to rush to come here just to be uh, at this um, tour right now. But that pork was amazing. I, I'm not kidding, it really was. So um, we're still waiting for the tour to start, but let me talk, to, let me talk about the, how um, really chewy the, um, the skin was. <laughs> and sweet. It was actually pretty good. Chewy and um, crunchy. It was really good. <laughs> I didn't even have rice with it or like any potatoes and stuff. I just ate it by itself and I still had a lot um, when we left but it was really good. Come down please. Hello. It starts now. So we're just waiting for this to start because it's almost four o'clock. So these things are gonna move. Uh, that's the, um, those are the figurines that you see um, outside. So I've already explained and talked about this part of the tour because we saw all this earlier that day on our own. We only came back here because of the underground city tour and you can only take it with a tour guide. So we have to go through all this again, but this time we have a guide. Yeah, well it just goes around like that. Look at that. That's it. Does follow you. The path it fo it follows you, right? It moved now. It's amazing. Here. <laughs> this is the tour that we were here for. I think it's the catacombs. We didn't go here. <laughs> earlier this morning. Wow. So the underground city was once the original medieval city of Prague, dating back to the 11th and 12th century. It was buried under the streets of the city as what we see today, mainly in order to prevent flooding of the town back then. Under most houses, palaces, and churches of the old town today, a whole complex of historical underground houses, rooms, streets, shops, prisons, and dungeons exists, and many more probably undiscovered as well. You know, I've only read about this coming here, and to be honest, I have no idea what to expect. So taking a tour of this underground city should give me an insight into the past of how people lived back then and how medieval Prague must have looked like. Ooh. Yeah, it kind of smells now. It smells like sewer. I can smoke. It smells like catacombs. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> oh, watch your head. Oh. Wow. I'm getting scared now. We're gonna see a lot of this in Athens. As we all got to this room, which was once, by the way, a living room, our tour guide explained to us some rules. And one rule I remember to this day is never separate from the group because there's many passageways down here and it's very possible to get lost. So from the living room, we're going to the kitchen. This is what, the kitchen? Oh my god, look at that. What's down there? 
Ooh. Somebody's throwing coins in there. What is this? Oh man. You can get lost in here. That's the living room. <clears throat> This looks like the kitchen or the dining table kind of thing. Oh, look at that, what the hell? Hmm. That's a house. This is a street. And we're going to another house. Which is going this way. Oh man. Oh my god. What is this room? This was like prison. a higher quality prison cell. And when you were sent to a prison like this, unfortunately, it was always a death sentence. Always. So you can't go in there because this actually goes deeper in there. And it's not that pleasant. But um, here is the well. Or it's, it's not really the well that you're talking about. People do throw, throw coins in there. They said they found about 200 people or dead people in there. This is, I don't know where we're going. That's for you folks. And this is like a two out of ten day danger zone. What is this? Some places have actually a two. Oh look, it's a kitchen. It's like Skyrim. <laughs> look at this place. It's like a kitchen. Oh shit, everybody's leaving me. What is this? Now guys, this is one of my most favorite rooms. Um, this is where the only executioner that ever lived. Yeah, he was here, here in this room. And his name was Kat Midlash. You so there's the executioners. As she was saying, this was the home of the most famous executioner in Prague during the 17th century. His name was Kat Milaj or Jean Milaj. He's known for killing 27 Bohemian rebel leaders in 1621. You know what's really amazing about him is the story of his life. How he became an executioner to save the love of his life and eventually losing her at the end. I wish I could tell you more about the story but I don't have enough video for it. Now we're gonna go up here. So this is the final room of the tour and from here we went through a door taking us back to the entrance of the old town hall. <laughs> ah. That was the end of the tour. It's actually interesting. I learned a lot from that place. Even like, um, she even mentioned like stuff to do here and what not to eat and what to eat. But I think we're pretty much doing what we're doing, right? Except for that thing we're about to eat that whatever Bulgarian and thing. I know. Anyway, now we're pretty much done for today. This is the astronomical clock. We're just gonna walk around and pretty much do nothing. If we do something interesting, I'm gonna film it. So, but for now, we're just gonna walk around. We're done.
Oh, we're gonna have dinner later. Yeah. You know what? I just realized though, um, this is the perfect time we can buy our souvenirs and stuff because we're pretty much done for today. And um, yeah, we should buy some souvenirs. This this is sad though. We just missed it by like two seconds. We could have gotten in there this morning. But we're gonna go there like two days from now. It's because they're gonna be closed tomorrow and they're gonna be open the next day. But we're gonna squeeze it in on our itinerary for two days from now. But for now, we're gonna, um, I guess, get some souvenirs, buy some souvenirs, right? Might as well. And then eat dinner, of course. There's so many stores and souvenir shops to choose from from all over this area. It's so easy to waste time trying to get the right gift or souvenir for the right price if you're not careful. I'm glad we both have no patience for it. So it was easy for us to find what we wanted and got that out of the way. So we decided to eat here. We found this on our app. It's just around the corner from our hotel. Okay, we went inside and um, they don't accept credit cards. We have cash, but we don't have that much cash. We only want to use the cash for emergency, so we're going to look for another restaurant. Now we actually found this place. It's right across the street from Majern. <laughs> that restaurant that only accepts credit cards. But this, or cash, sorry. So this is the name of the restaurant. And I don't know. We just want to eat something light. And um, their food is kind of kind of heavy there's a lot of beef in here but we'll see I saw chicken so uh, chicken dish I'll probably order that one from the menu she got herself the roasted trout with lemon and for me I got myself the grilled chicken with basil dip I'm kind of tired of meat I've been eating meat since Dublin so it's a change for me got myself another beer I guess you know what I'm starting to like this beer now And you're having wine. <laughs> it's kind of hot in here. I'm gonna finally remove my shirt and get to see my fat body. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still skinny, right? Not that fat yet. <laughs> so this is the grilled chicken with basil dip. The chicken breasts look a little small and looked a little dry to me, but the dry part is actually okay because I prefer it dry. I'm not sure about the sauce underneath. It could be chicken broth mixed with something, but it does smell good though. And about the salad, I really couldn't say much about it. I mean look at it, it looks like someone's leftover. But on the other hand, the basil dip looks pretty good. Although I've never had basil dip before and I've never heard it paired with chicken, so this will be my first time to try it. Now this is the roasted trout with lemon. I couldn't say 100% if I had trout before, but most likely I probably have. Anyway, this dish looks really simple. It's just the fish and lemon with some salad underneath. You know, I'm actually surprised both dishes didn't come with any sides. I mean, at least some potatoes would have been nice. I'm gonna try the chicken first. It's a grilled chicken. Um, the sauce might be the thing that makes it... Oh, the skin is nice and crispy. Really good. Wow. Mm hmm. Wow. It's hot, but this sauce is really good. Really, really good. Now I'm gonna try it with that. A little bit of sauce here. I don't know what this is. Mm. It's different. I don't know what kind of sauce it is. Maybe like basil sauce or something. But this chicken is really good. It's crispy, really tender, and this sauce is amazing. Really amazing. Now the fish. This is a trout. I'll cut this. Oh wow. There's no sauce on this. It's just by itself. Yeah. There's like lemon right here. Put some lemon on this. Mm. 
very simple. It's not salty. It's um, it's not dry. It's um, it's very juicy. You can see it. It's really juicy. But um, I think, to be honest, I think it needs more salt. That's what I think. But all in all, this two dishes is really good. We just mixed it up. This is the fish and the chicken. Oh, we ordered a uh, fries. Because <clears throat> um, we need some kind of carbs. This sauce I don't like. But the sauce on the chicken is really good. And um, also this. Mm -hmm. Right? The sauce on the, the salad is pretty good too. I don't know what it is. That's, those are the, one of those things that I wish during new. So I can buy it. I have to say they the were both the really, good. really good. The chicken was cooked perfectly, but definitely the sauce made it. Whatever that sauce is, it was amazing. The fish I have to say was perfectly cooked as well, but it needed a little bit more seasoning. If I had to choose which one I liked the most, I would say the chicken only because of the sauce. If it wasn't for that, it would have been a tie. We decided to have a dessert. It's a chocolate ice cream with fruits. Look at all that berries, all them fruits. All mixed together with a chocolate ice cream. And then um, she ordered another wine. That's her second, that's her third. This is my second. It's pretty good. That actually looks good. This is the chocolate ice cream. Good fruits. Mm. It's okay. It's not that great. The ice cream is good. Yeah. But the um the one from yesterday, the ice cream cake, man, and the and the uh, vanilla, that was really good. Fondue, chocolate fondue. 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 Was it fondue? No. I don't know. <laughs> I know it's hard to make. Whatever the hell that thing is. This is good with wine, by the way. Not with ice, no, not, not with beer. So after we finished eating and tried to make sense of what we're talking about, we walked around the Old Town Square to end the day. I hate music. All those um, copyright music and stuff. I have to avoid every single place that has music. It's hard because every restaurant has music. So I don't know but it's nice like right here in the middle of uh, the square. You can hear a little bit of music, but it's kind of faint. So I don't think I'm gonna edit that out. You know, if I lived here in Prague, I would never get tired ending the day walking around this square. It's just beautiful. Anyway, that ends our first full day in Prague. And despite seeing so many landmarks, I would say the Old Town Hall and Astronomical Clock was the most significant landmark we visited today. So on the next video, we're going to explore deeper inside the Old Town area of Prague, where we'll cross the famous Charles Bridge all the way to Prague Castle and visiting many landmarks as we can along the way.